Hello, I'm Jeff Power, Senior Writer for Real-Time Fantasy Sports, and welcome to another edition of the Real-Time Fantasy Sports Show on today's show. It is Tuesday, so that means we're going to do our wavering video for the week, and I am thrilled to be joined by Evan Webb, contributing writer of for Real-Time Fantasy Sports. First time he's been on the show. So thanks so much for joining me, Evan. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to talking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jeff. Should be a lot of fun going over these waiver wire picks for the week. Uh, there's a lot of injuries, unfortunately, this past week, Evan, especially at the running back spot. A lot of good guys went down. So we have some options for everybody out there. Hopefully we don't see too many injuries uh, like this again going forward. It was a rough week last week, right? It was. It was a very tough week uh, injury-wise and even some at the quarterback position as well. So um, definitely a lot to talk about there. Yeah, let's jump into the quarterback spot first. So uh, give me a couple guys you're thinking about targeting on the waiver wire this week at the QB spot. Yeah, so my first guy that I'm really targeting this week is a guy who's replacing a starter, and that's Teddy Bridgewater uh, for the Miami Dolphins. Of course, we all know the big Tua injury that happened last Thursday night. Um, it was a brutal hit, as we all know. Um, and I think Teddy Bridgewater – now that he's had basically a whole week to prepare, um, actually probably about 10 days to prepare um, coming off the Thursday game, I think he'll be ready to go for this next game. And uh, they're playing a Jets team that's, you know, not particularly good defensively. Um, you know, they're ranked 25th in, pass, in points allowed this year. And, you know, Teddy Bridgewater wasn't too bad in this last game. I mean, 14 for 23 and 193 yards. And, again, that was only one half of football to um in that game and the one thing about the Dolphins too is they have playmakers he has guys to go to uh, big explosive guys like Tyreek Hill or um or Jalen Waddle so uh I think Teddy Bridgewater is a guy that um you know not not owned by a lot of teams and I think he's a guy that uh to look at as well all right who's your who's your other QB your team? yeah so the other guy is going to be playing against Teddy Bridgewater this week and that's Zach Wilson and uh, I thought Zach Wilson had a very good first game uh, for coming off the uh, injured reserve. And, uh, you know, 18 for 36, 252 yards. He did have two interceptions last week, but he is playing against a Miami defense. It's ranked 23rd in passing yards this year. So um, I think it'll be a, a possibly a good add. And I think Zach Wilson has a high ceiling. So um, I think he's somebody to definitely look. Uh, to add this week yeah I like him a lot too for the fact that they've been throwing the ball a ton lately I mean uh I think uh when Joe Flacco was in there he ever around 50 passing attempts per game so that bodes well for Wilson uh going forward my two QBs my first one's Geno Smith I feel like I I talk about him every week on this show but he's still out there in roughly 76 percent of leagues on our site uh I, I and you know, he's producing. He's he's a top 10 fantasy quarterback right now. He scored at least 23 fantasy points each of the past two games. He's top 300 passing yards each of those games, multiple touchdowns, three or four games. He has very good receivers to work with, with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And Will Disley's been playing well as uh, also at the tight end spot. And Geno Smith just keeps getting it done. He's Frankly, he's outplaying the guy who replaced Russell Wilson right now, which is a huge surprise to me because I didn't think he had it in him. But I like Geno Smith still if you're looking for a QB, especially a streaming option. And my next one's Kenny Pickett, another guy who's uh, uh, getting a chance to start now. This this was because of ineffectiveness, though. Mitchell Trubisky just not getting it done. Pickett came in. He was picked off three times in the game, so you can't overlook that. But I don't think they were really any of his fault. Balls you know, flying off people's hands. One was a Hail Mary. He was 10 of 13 uh, besides those three picks. So the three picks – were his three incompletions, threw for 120 yards, ran in two scores. I think he's a big boost for the entire Steelers offense and the receivers as well. And I think Pickett's a guy who you could end up being a streaming uh, option as well. He's available in a lot of leagues also on our site. Let's move on to the running back spot now, Evan. Uh, who's a couple guys you're looking at on the waiver wire this week? Yeah, my first guy is going to be Isaiah Pacheco from Kansas City. Um, we actually just saw him a lot on Sunday night. Um, he had a season high of 12 rushing attempts against Tampa the other night. And so his usage did go up a little bit. Now, obviously, he's going to be competing with uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire and, uh, you know, getting those rushing attempts and getting a lot of those touches. But 
Um, I did like what I saw against Tampa, and I think uh, they're facing a Raiders team, which has been really, really bad. 31st in red zone rushing defense this year. Um, so I think he's going to maybe get some opportunities in the red zone, him or Edward Sealer both. So uh, I think it's a game that Kansas City is going to score a lot of points in. Yeah, definitely. Who, who else are you looking at at that running back spot? Yeah, so the other guy I like is uh, Mark Ingram from the Saints. Uh, Alvin Kamara is still very questionable this week um, with that rib injury. And uh, Mark Ingram last week had 10 rushing attempts, um, gets a couple of receiving touches as well. Um, and they're playing a Seattle defense, which hasn't been particularly good either. Um, you know, ranked 26 in rushing yards allowed this year. So I think Mark Ingram, at least for this week, uh, is a good uh, pickup, at least again for this week. Yeah, I didn't like Ingram quite as much until I saw Latavius Murray sign with the uh, Broncos and Makes me feel a lot better about Ingram because he has little to compete with for touches if Kamara misses once again. Uh, for running back, for me, this guy, I wasn't going to even put on the list because I thought he was owned in all the leagues, but he's not, uh, which is kind of surprising. That's Tyler Algier. Uh, he's still available in about 44% of leagues uh, on our site. Uh, so he's still out there in you know nearly half the leagues, and he's going to be starting now. Cordero Patterson, he was placed on injured reserve because of his knee injury, so that means he's out at least the next four games. So Algiers, the guy who's going to be starting, had his best game of the season last week, ran 10 times for 84 yards, also had a catch for 20 yards. So he had 104 total yards in that game. I think he's going to get a, a lot of volume in an Atlanta offense. It really has become run heavy, uh, much to the chagrin of you know all those uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London o owners, unfortunately. But that's the way they're going. They're running the ball a lot. Algiers is going to be the starter now. So I think he's going to be a, a good play these next coming weeks because Patterson's run very well in that offense. And my other uh, option is Mike Boone. So quite frankly, I'm just – I don't like this whole <clears throat> Denver situation, excuse me, uh, at running back just because Melvin Gordon's been fumbling and now Mike Boone's the backup and then you bring in Latavius Murray. So it's kind of scares me a little bit. It's kind of all jumbled up. But I think Boone could end up, you know, maybe emerging out of that pack uh, just because he's been getting into the mix more lately and Gordon's had all those fumbling issues, quite frankly, just hasn't been very effective when he's on the field as well. So I like Boone as a speculative grab. Uh, he's out there in pretty much every league on our site at this point. He's owned at just 0.5%. So uh, he's out there. They like to run the ball. And I think Boone might end up being the guy. And uh, so I might take a chance on him. I'm not playing him this week, but – I would probably uh, consider picking him up when looking for some running back help. All right, let's move on to the receiver spot now. Uh, Evan, uh, who do you got as some waiver wire grabs at receiver? Yeah, so my next one will be uh, Devontae Parker uh, for the uh, for the New England Patriots. They're going up against Detroit, and Detroit has been giving up a ton of points this year. Um, so 31st and points allowed, and you know only owned by 34%, like you see there. And uh, he had a big game against Baltimore. Wasn't particularly good last week. Didn't get a ton of looks against Green Bay. But I think against this Lions team coming up, I think he's going to get a lot more uh, looks. And I think he's going to get some red zone opportunities as well. And then my next guy I got is Nico Collins from the Houston Texans. Um, he's hasn't got a ton of usage yet, but I think he's a really high ceiling guy. And Lovey Smith actually talked about this week how he wants to get Nico Collins involved a little bit more offensively, use some of that playmaking ability. Um, Davis Mills just hasn't really just hasn't been able to get him the ball enough. But he had his first uh, decent game last week, 82 yards receiving. Um, so I expect to see a little bit more out of him uh, this week for the Texans. Yeah, a lot of people had Collins as a breakout sleeper candidate this year. And, and he got dropped by some owners because of his slow start, but I'm like you. I think he's going to get it going at some point here in the near future. I like that call. A couple guys for me, uh, one of them is Alec Pierce uh, with the Indianapolis Colts. The rookie, he seems to finally get his footing in the offense. Had a good game for a second straight week last week. Four catches for 80 yards. That was a season high in yards. He has seven catches for 141 yards on 11 targets his last two games. He's very talented. A good red zone target in that offense. They need somebody to step up besides Michael Pittman. Paris Campbell just not getting it done, quite frankly. So I think Pierce could end up being a D guy. And with Jonathan Taylor banged up as well, that could mean 
that uh, the passing game gets a little more work uh, in these coming weeks also. So I think Pierce is a guy that could really end up uh, getting going for fantasy teams here in the near, near future. And he's available in a lot of leagues as well, uh, roughly 77% on our site. Uh, another guy, this is another player that I thought was owned in most leagues, but he's not. So I, I have to mention him, and that's George Pickens, another stealer for me. So he's owned in roughly 67% of leagues. So he's still out there in a decent amount on our site. And with Kenny Pickett there now, I think Pickens just skyrockets, in my opinion. His value goes way, way up because Pickett looked a lot his way in the preseason, looked a lot his way last week. He had his best game of the season, Pickens, last week. Six catches, 102 yards on eight targets. I think he's just starting to take off. Super talented player, and I think the the best is yet to come for him. He's really going to start playing well. This this will probably be the last week uh, if he's available in your leagues that he's going to be out there. I, I'm really excited about his future now that uh, Pickett as is as his starting quarterback. At, by the way, that Pickens Pickett thing that's a tough thing to navigate. Uh, talking about there, I was just <laughs> the same thing. I was like that Pickett Pickens combo is going to be going to be one that, and somebody might even try to add them both at the same time. That's so. true. Uh, yeah, they can name, that's a good team name to have. Uh, you can change your team. There name. you go. <laughs> All right, like let's that. move on to tight end. The always frustrating tight end spot this year. It's been kind of a mess uh, with a lot of disappointing players. Uh, who, who's somebody you think could uh, help fantasy owners right now? Yeah, it's like you said, the tight end position is really tough, and even even some of the ones that are you know eighty plus eighty percent or more owned by owners are really not doing well but I'm gonna go with Hayden Hurst from Cincinnati Um, he's kind of been up and down all season he kind of finally had his first he had his first touchdown reception this past week and uh, I think Cincinnati's offense is going to try to get him a little bit more involved Um, it kind of seemed like Cincinnati was struggling a little bit the first couple weeks to get back into the groove of things maybe coming off that you know going to the Super Bowl and everything and um but I liked what I saw last week out of Cincinnati. So I think Hayden Hurst is going to get involved a little bit more uh, going forward uh, for the Bengals. All right. My pick is a guy, another guy I, I feel like I've talked about a lot on this show, but he's still out there. So people aren't listening, I guess, or they, they don't want to believe it. But it's Will Disley. And, again, kind of a touchdown-dependent player. But he has touchdowns uh, three or four games, scored again last week. The Seahawks' offense has surprisingly looked very good. Uh, especially the passing game, like we talked, like I talked about earlier with Geno Smith. He's played very well. And, I mean, even Disley might not be quite as touchdown dependent as well because he's getting a few more catches. He has at least three receptions all but a game. He caught four passes last week, so that was a, a plus for him in that area also. So uh, he's getting it done, and he's out there in a lot of leagues as well. Again, might be a little touchdown dependent, but if it's the right matchup, I would not be afraid to use him, uh, especially with the way the tight end position's been this season all right logan let's do talk about a streaming defense uh for this week we like to do this every week on the show because a lot of people don't like to you know spend high draft capital capital on a defense so they like to pick them up on a weekly basis who's a streaming option for fantasy owners this week yeah i think for this week in particular it's the minnesota vikings defense they're going to get they're going up against the chicago bears and the bears have been one of the worst, probably the worst passing offense in the league. I think Minnesota is going to maybe force a lot of turnovers, get to the quarterback a little bit this week. Um, so I, I like the Vikings, at least for this week in particular. If, you know, you have a normal defense that has that's you know going up against a tough team or a tough matchup, maybe this week just add the Vikings going up against the Bears. I think, I think the Vikings are going to um, run away with this one. Yeah, much like the Lions uh, defense, when you're talking about starting players, you want to start players who are playing the Lions. I think starting defenses that are playing the Bears is a a good play as well because they're not very good, like you mentioned. Uh, Jacksonville is my streamer for this week. They're really a top five fantasy defense right now. They scored a touchdown last week against a good Eagles offense. They didn't really shut them down, but they got intercepted a pass, uh, got a couple sacks as well. They have multiple sacks, two or four games. Uh, they're playing the Texans. They're not very explosive, uh, and they're at home as well in this matchup, Jacksonville, so I think that's a, a plus for them. And uh, they're available in about 64% of leagues on our side as well. So Jacksonville's out there. They've been producing, have a good matchup this week. I would uh, consider adding them if you're looking for a defense. 
All right, Evan. Uh, appreciate you joining me uh, on for the first time ever. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime soon. A lot of fun. And uh, awesome. good luck. Good luck week five. Appreciate it. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. All right. This has been Jeff Power for Real-Time Fantasy Sports. Have a great day, everyone.